That's what we're doing today. Let's worship God. You are the Lord, the famous one. Great is your fame in all the earth. And the heavens declare that you're glorious. this morning. So I'm glad you're here this morning. You can go ahead and take a seat. I have a couple of announcements to give you real quick this morning. Um, several things going on. It's great to be a, a part of a church that has a lot going on. I, I've, I told Kara, I just had so many people come up, hey, we've got this, we have this, we have this, we have this, and man, it just makes my heart happy that we have a church that's doing something. Amen. Uh, we have tonight, 
We have our Roots Discipleship Program is going on tonight. We have something for everybody tonight. We have a discipleship class for uh, the children. We have a discipleship class for students and adults, uh, men and women both. So we have something for everybody. Do not miss this. I know it's been a blessing for me to have that extra night with my students uh, and for, for Pastor Kara and Pastor Justin to really connect um, to the ladies and to the men on, on a personal level. It's been really, really good. So make sure you're here tonight at 6. 6 o'clock tonight for our Roots Discipleship. Also, today, between 2 and 4 o'clock, um, we have Jennifer Harris. Make some noise for Jennifer Harris back here. So everybody loves Jennifer Harris. Hey, Jennifer and the rest of the Lighthouse Band are going to be performing at the Community Center uh, here in Bowie. It's a free concert, and it's for Right Hand Ministries. It's basically uh, homeless and, and a homeless ministry that transitions them um, from being homeless to being home, I guess. I don't even know what you could, being home plus, I guess. Anyways, so um, it, it's a, just a, it's a really cool ministry that takes place here in Monte County, so make sure you go out and support these guys. You love hearing them every single week. They do a phenomenal job, so make sure you're there today from two to four. If you have a little bit, go out, check them out, and then be back here for Roots. Also, um, there's a baby shower Saturday uh, at Dos chilies at what time? Noon. That, that makes sense. It is a lunch baby shower, so it's going to be at 12 o'clock at Dos chilies for Miss Shannon. It, Shannon and Casey had a beautiful, beautiful baby, so we're going to bless them Saturday at 12 o'clock at Dos chilies Also, um, last but not least, we have a trunk or treat that's happening here. It is going to be is it next, this coming Sunday, right, the 28th. Um, it's our fall harvest. We do it. Hey, the time wasn't on the last one. I'm just dumb and didn't know. I've got the sound booth telling me how retarded I am right now. I'm sorry. I didn't know lunch was at noon. All right. So, <laughs> trunk or treat. I'm trying to, I'll get it back. Hold on. I'll get it back. Trunk or treat is part of our fall harvest. We do um, every single year for Halloween. We have a big event. We get, I mean, several hundred people on campus bring their kids um, we get to give them candy and just hang out all the cute costumes all that stuff there's a craft show uh, in the FLC uh, but we need to know how many of you are actually planning on decorating your vehicle uh, to give candy out to children that night so we can set up the parking lot accordingly so uh, make sure it hey, Kim Duke is Kim Duke still the reigning champion of trunk or treat I think so. Kim, the Duke family is the family to beat this year. So, and you're going to have to try hard to do it. So, uh, it w you decorate your vehicle as a game uh, or uh, just anything cool. You can make it a game where they can win candy. You can give out massive amounts of candy. It's entirely up to you. But make sure you sign up so we know how to lay out the parking lot. There's a sign up sheet on the information booth. So, everybody give a trunk or treat. Yeah. Amen. All right, kids, y'all go ahead and come in. Make your way in. We got to do something really special. Speaking of trunk or treat and fall harvest, Miss Krista told me we do not have enough candy for this amount of cavities walking in the room right now. So you guys spread out. We're going to do a dash for cash for fall harvest. So the kids are going to come around. They're going to shake you down for some dollar bills. So you better pull out some change. Pull out. Mandy Pullen, you can't get away from it that easy. You can't get away from it that easy. You can't run. Kids, y'all start finding some people and hitting them up for some money. So there's a lot of there's a lot of dollars out there. If you have some money, hold it up, wave it at them. Hold it up and wave it at Here's some right here in the middle. If it didn't look like they're giving enough, you ask them to give some more. Uh-oh, Zachy needs some money, Mom. Right here, there's another dollar. Come on, reach deep. It's candy. This is ministry. This is outreach. You can't say no to these faces. All right, kids, as you get the money, bring it right up here. Throw it in the offering right up here.
Any more dollars? All right, y'all can use another plate. Somebody paid Riley in a mint. Right here, use this other plate. Use this other plate. A 50, throw it right there. Don't be putting it in your pocket. Zach, you better put that money back. Pastor's kids, what are you going to do with them? What are you going to do with them? Our plates are overflowing. That must be a good, use this other one right over here. This must be a good dash. Use one of these plates over here. All right, as you get your, as you, as you dump your money, go ahead and make your way out, guys. Thank you guys so much for participating in the Dash for Cash this morning. we could get the ushers to come back this morning, we're going to take up the regular tithe and offering, but I want to share just a second about my heart for what's happening on Halloween night. Um, Masquerade is a series that I've been holding on to for, for a while. Um, it just deals with the different masks that we place on ourselves um, on a day-to-day basis. We wake up in the morning and and You know, it may be a rough time in our life, but we put on that mask of happiness that we walk out into the world and we just fake it. The people that we meet, hey, how are you doing? Uh, Everything's going great. It couldn't be better when in reality we're dying on the inside. You know, when when in reality we're struggling just to get out of bed and just to to make it through. and, And it's just one of those things that students and adults alike deal with every single day where they have to put on a mask and walk into school and be something that they're not. And so we're going to take a couple of weeks 
and we're going to deal with some of those masks, see if we can get to the underlying issues, so we see if we can see what's really underneath that creature that God really created, somebody that's not scared to be who God made them to be, somebody that's not scared to be a child of the king, somebody that's not scared to walk into their school and do what they need to do for God. We're, gonna, we're just going to deal with some of these real issues. Um, so it's happening Halloween night. I encourage you, if you have a student, if you know somebody between 6th and 12th grade, you encourage them to be here that night. Um, like the video said, everybody that walks through the door that night is going to be um, entered into a drawing to make a half-court basketball shot for $10,000. So we're giving away a chance to win $10,000 on October 31st. So um, listen, you can look at that and say, and this is just student ministry that's just trying to buy people here, and, and you're right. I'm doing everything I can to make sure those students walk through the door that night because after all the hype is over, I'm going to present the gospel in a way that's real and that's relevant and that will give them an opportunity to change their life in a second. So, yes, I'm going to buy them to get them there. I think you guys, I mean, you guys know my heart and you know the heart of this church enough to know that listen, this isn't a game. And it's not about coming together every week and playing some games and giving away points and prizes. So this really is our heart. And it really is our pastor's heart and something that I've learned so much from him and, and watching him just love on people. So uh, if you have a student, grandchild, uh, niece, nephew, if you have a friend that has a kid, whatever you have to do, um, we have invite cards in my office. So make sure you invite them. Give it up for Jeff Livesey made that video, by the way. We just... Pastor and I have started calling him the beautiful mind. He, he sees things that nobody else can see. Uh, and is, it's exactly why he fits right here at Lighthouse. Pastor said, you know, there's a, there's a reason why I think he belongs here. And it's because he doesn't think like you and I do. He has a beautiful mind. There's stuff that he can add. And he's done it ever since we hired him on here. Um, absolutely incredible man. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm, I don't want to get a big head up here or anything. But. If you come prepared to give in the tithe and offering today, we're going to give you an opportunity to do that. So I hope you didn't give all your money to the kids. we got to give to God what's God's, all right? So if you have your offering, we just want to pray over it really quick. Father, I ask right now, in the name of Jesus, that you would bless this offering, Father. Every ministry that we have going out, God, I just pray that you would continue to fund it. God, that you would continue to provide immeasurably more than we could ask or dream, God. I pray that you would further this offering, use it for your kingdom, in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. God bless you guys as you give. You guys want to stand again and worship with us? Sing, I'm counting on your name. I'm counting on your name. I'm counting on your name. I'm counting on your name to say. Trusting the other way, Lord, I'm trusting the other way. I'm trusting the other way, my Savior. My life is written on Your hands. You've called me Your own. You've called me Your own. Now I am Yours, no. Tear us apart, tear us apart. I'm counting, I'm counting on your name. I'm counting on your name. I'm counting on your name to save me, and I'm just. 
trusting you're the way I'm trusting you're the way I'm trusting you're the way my Faithfulness, your faithfulness. Counting on Christ and Christ alone. I'm hoping in you. I'm hoping in you. Counting on your name. I'm counting on your name. I'm counting on your name. I'm trusting you the way I'm trusting you the way I'm trusting you the way my savior Cause I'm counting on your name I'm counting on your name I'm counting on your name to save me and I'm trusting Cause I believe, yes I believe, and I believe you are the way. Let's lift that up and sing I believe. I believe, I believe, I believe you are the way. that out this morning. And I'm trusting in your the ways. The only thing there is to trust. The only absolute that's ever trusted 
the test of time over and over and over and over and over again. I'm trusting you the way. Lord, I'm trusting you the way. Now I'm trusting you the way. My on your name to save me and I'm trusting you the way and I'm trusting you the way trusting you the way my on those words. You are worthy. Sing, you are holy. Father, you are holy. You are holy. You are holy. Oh, you lift your voice.
Jim, I want you just to sing that again this morning. I want you just to focus in. If you're comfortable this morning, just slip your hands to heaven. You don't have to wait for an altar call this morning. God is here. If you need peace this morning, you need forgiveness, you need direction, right there where you're standing this morning, all you got to do is ask the Lord right there. You don't have to scream it. He knows your heart this morning. I want They're going to sing this again. As you sing those words, hallelujah, I want you just to cry out to God. Whatever you need this morning, ask him this morning, Lord, I need peace. I need joy back in my heart. God, I've been struggling in addiction. I've been struggling with unforgiveness. There's pain. Some of you just, you need direction. You've suffered loss. Some of you just hurting this morning. Your heart's been broken. And you need what only God can give you this morning. I want to just take the next few seconds. They're going to sing this again. And let, listen, can you just worship him this morning? Let's just worship him for a few seconds. Don't, there's no need to get in a hurry. Right there where you're at, let's just let God have his way. Can we do that? Go ahead, Jeff, sing it again. Come on, church, lift your voice this morning. Anybody love him this morning? Anybody feel his presence this morning? Oh, come on. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Oh, come on. Act like you mean it this morning. Lord, we bless you. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. It is, I, listen, I'm glad to be back at Lighthouse Assembly. I've been out for a few weeks and I went to help a pastor friend of mine and preached a pastor appreciation for him last Sunday morning in Burke Burnett. And let me just tell you something. They're not near as pretty as this church right here. But I'd rather preach to you any day of the week. Nothing against them, but I love preaching to Lighthouse Assembly. Amen. God bless you for being here. Real quick, just hug somebody's neck. Would you do that right there around you? Greet somebody this morning. Tell them how much you love them. Amen. bless you this morning. You may be seated if you can find a place. I see a lot of a lot of new faces. It's nice to have Robbie with us from California. Robbie, God bless you. 
He slipped in here. I'd like for him to stay, but he's probably going to be leaving as soon as he can. Amen. God bless you, Robbie, for being here. I know your parents and family are excited you're here. Amen. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Listen, I'm so excited about what God is doing. and I, I, I'm, We're about to do something that really is, if you could wrap it up to the heart of this church and the heart of these people, you guys are some of the greatest people I've ever been around in my life. And I'm thankful I'm able to, to pastor you. And you make it very, very easy to pastor you. I, I promise you that. I get around a lot of pastors and go to different conferences and stuff and and. A lot of times pastors get together and they just want to complain and gripe about their church people and how bad they're being treated. And y'all don't do that to me. Y'all, y'all treat my family and you treat our staff very, very well. And I'm not just telling you that so it'll smooth. I, I'm being honest because I would tell you if you're mean to me, all right? Because I got some people that will throw rocks at you if you're mean to me, all right? But you guys are incredible. You guys, your heart. And uh, I'm going to ask Brother Stephen and, and Trevor if they'll come this morning. And uh, they've got something they want to do this morning that really just started with these two guys in our men's ministry. And I'm going to let them come and kind of do that this morning. Well, if you didn't know, uh, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. And um, so we just wanted to, uh, well, first of all, let's just stand up and give our pastors a big round of applause because, man, they deserve it. Kim, will you put uh, Genesis 27.3 up, please? Now then, get your weapons. You're a seven millimeter uh, savage and go out to the open country to hunt some wild game for me. <clears throat> it, it's biblical, y'all. So, but um, anyway, if, if you haven't talked to Jeff lately... Um, Jeff has been stoked about hunting here lately. He killed him a big hog, and yeah, there he is. And as I was asking him, you know, like, well, man, tell me about it. Uh, you know, how far was the shot? Did he run? Did you have to blood trail him? He dropped in his tracks or what? And he's like, and I, well, I said, what kind of guns you use? And he said, well, I had to borrow one off Justin. I was like, man, you don't borrow guns. You know, that's like, that's like borrowing somebody's underwear. You know, you don't, you don't borrow guns. So, um, I was talking to Christy, and I was like, man, we got we to gotta get this guy a gun. And she's like, well, Steven, you got plenty of guns. Why don't you give him one of yours? I was like, no, that's a stupid, I- it's a stupid idea. We're not- I'm not giving him any of my guns. But anyway, uh, so I started talking to some of the other guys, and they really, you know, their heart was in it, too. They wanted to bless this guy, so... We went together and we got him a brand new Savage Model 111 with a three by nine Bushnell, two box of core locked 150 grain bullets, backpack, scent control, camouflage, binoculars, you got the works, man. Listen, we even made You're hooked up. You've got hoodies, and also with it is a $100 Cabela's card, so you can go finish getting your camo and all that good stuff. So can we just show one more time how much we love Jeff? Y'all are crazy. Amen. I hate to do this, but because of all this, we love Jeff. Everybody give Jeff another hand. It's not that we've forgotten our real pastors, but because they did this today, we decided to back our plan up for next Sunday. So everyone that's here needs to be here next Sunday because we will be honoring all of our pastors and all of our staff on the final Sunday of uh, October. But as he said, give all of our pastors a hand. I just didn't want you to think we forgot about them. Oh, goodness. 
Sit down, I'm ready to preach. I'm going to try. Don't let this be a reflection of what you give me this next week, all right? Think of all the good times or one good time. Whatever good memory you have, hold strong to that one, okay? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Listen, I'm going to give you a lot of scripture this morning. I'm gonna, I've got a message that's been on my heart. If you were here Wednesday night, it, it kind of come out of Wednesday night's message. We've been preaching and walking through on Wednesday nights, putting on the full armor of God. And this morning, this message was confirmed once again. Uh, and I'll get to that in just a few moments. But if you have your Bibles with you this morning, turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, if you don't have this passage of Scripture marked, this would be a great time to mark it. If you don't have a Bible this morning, uh, we have Bibles up here that you can have. If you want to grab a Bible, if for some reason you don't have one and you don't want to come get it, uh, poke somebody else and they'll go get it for you, all right? But we have Bibles up here. I I've got several passages of Scripture. We'll put them on the screen that I want you, if you can, uh, to turn in your Bibles there. If you need to, turn your Bible on, however that works. I know some of your Bibles are glowing, and that's okay. Uh, but if you can mark this, uh, this would be a great time to do this. There's several scriptures that I want you to get, and I want you to be able to go back and read this over and over. But Ephesians chapter 6 is one that probably all of us need to read daily. And uh, I want to deal with some things this morning that God has laid on my heart personally, uh, that God really convicted me. Uh, and this is something that really, uh, that I was exposed to over the last month, that really just my wife and I, God just really convicted us about certain things, and, uh, and it's something that should be convicting of all of us, and it, it, the specifics may not be, but the general idea of it is something that I want to really focus on this morning. If you look at Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, many of you have heard this passage of Scripture, you've quoted it, you've heard it preached on many, many times. But I want to read it this morning, and then I want to focus in on, on one part of this. Verse 10 says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. If you've got a pen right there, you need to underline full. All right? It's very important this morning. That's one of the key things that we're going to talk about. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. You need to underline that right there. Because some of us get too caught up in fighting with our boss and fighting with our husband and fighting with our sister and fighting with our kids and fighting with our neighbor and fighting with people you don't even know on Facebook. you just fighting. you just your battle. Everybody's against me. Right here, verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Somebody say amen. You need to underline that and remind yourself of that. But, uh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil and in heavenly realms. Therefore, there it is again, put on the full armor of God. Underline that again, full. So that when the day, when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, verse 14 says, Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Now, if you were here a few weeks ago, you know that we talked about the buckle, the buckle of truth. Truth, it's the same as integrity. The first thing mentioned, the first thing mentioned in armor that you put on, that you and I are to put on, is the belt of truth. It's what holds every thing together. You've been to the malls and you've been around, you've seen kids running around, their pants are falling down, they're holding them up, they need a belt. And with that, if they had a belt, their pants wouldn't fall down. But if you were to take both their hands away, <laughs> they put their hands up, the pants just drop straight to the ground. There's a lot of Christians walking around with all this armor and we can't do anything with it because we don't have a belt on. You just fall to place. If you look with the armor, the armor, the, it all starts with the belt. It's what every piece of the armor attaches to it. There's loops and it, it ties in and it's what helps you to put your sword and it's got places to put your weapons. It's, it's what you tuck your tunic into so that it doesn't get in the way while you're fighting. The belt of truth, the belt of integrity is the very first thing that you and I have to put on this morning. It's what holds everything together. And if you can't walk in integrity, you won't be able to fight with integrity. 
So many people trying, so many Christians, so many people walking in the church today that they want to fight and they want to get on Sunday morning and Wednesday night and they want to get in the battle and they want to do all this stuff, but you can't. If you're not walking in integrity, you won't be able to fight in integrity. We've got to be able to walk, and it starts with when you're putting on the full armor of God, it starts with putting on the belt of truth. And we go here, the next one here, put on the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up your shield of faith, which you will extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the saints. You see, church, many of us, we fall into a trap sometimes of thinking that our Christian life and living for God and this road that we're on, sometimes we kind of wrap it all up into, well, you know, it's just, we get to where it's just kind of just services. If I can get to Sunday morning, if I can get to Wednesday, how many know what I'm talking about? It's, it's Tuesday afternoon, you think, man, I, I'm ready for Wednesday night service, or it's Thursday morning, man, I can't wait to get to church on Sunday morning. I need to go to church. Some of you are like, I don't, I don't feel that way. That's because you're not saved. That's because you need Jesus this morning. Listen, when you're seeking God, when you, God is in your heart and you begin to pursue righteousness and the things of God, you want to be around godly people and godly things. So somebody say amen. Act like you're enjoying it even if you're not. Listen, there, there's things that you want to be around. God, when you start focusing on God, you want more of it. There's a thirst. It's, it's being the salt of the earth. It's that salt that continues to give you thirst for it. And when you're around people, and you're around people that are in love with God, that are excited about God. How many of you like being around somebody that may be newly saved, or God's just performing miracles in their lives, and they're so excited and they're pumped and you talk to them like man there's nothing my God can't do and you're listening to them talking like, man I wish I could man I wish I had that I want to be around somebody like that that's excited instead of just saying well I don't know what we're going to do Obama gets in we're going to have this and this and we're going to take our guns and just the negative and all this stuff listen the election shouldn't be controlling your life this morning the king of kings and the lord of lords should be the one that's in control of your life oh that was horrible I'm going to get back to over here the breastplate of righteousness is the second thing that's mentioned. In studying this, there's been some things that have come to my attention and, and have convicted my heart when it comes to righteousness. Uh, Brother Barry called me this morning early, all excited, and he had all these scriptures and all this stuff. He called me, he said, God's been giving me all this. He, he just started... If you know Barry, you know he loves to read God's Word. He loves to study. And he just, he's just praying. And he just he called me and he starts reading all these scriptures. He's like, here, let me pull over. He pulls over and he starts going down and he starts reading. You know, I've got his notes right here. I've got front and back. There's about seven or eight scriptures on righteousness. And he's just telling me. And the whole time I'm just I'm driving in and I'm just like, I can't believe he's doing it. As he gets done, I said, Barry, do you want to know what I'm preaching on this morning? He said, what? I said, I'm preaching on the breastplate of righteousness. And he said, you have got to be kidding me. I said, nope. I said, I, I'm just glad to know you pray, Barry. I'm just glad you're praying and in, in tune with God and all that stuff. By the way, happy birthday today. He is 69 years young. They don't look a day over 70, does he? Amen. Amen. I love that old man. Amen. I do. He knows I do. He don't mind me calling him old man because he is old. He's old. It's just the way it goes. Amen. But I want to talk to you this morning about the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness is this. Psalm 119 says, 172 says, My tongue shall speak of your word, for all your commandments are righteousness. 1 John 3 and 4 says, Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34 says, Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. This morning, righteousness is this. Righteousness is the opposite of sin. 
Righteousness of God, righteousness is anything that brings glory and honor and brings any truth to God's word and to what he stands for. God this morning is righteousness. How many of you believe that this morning? To put on the righteousness of God, to put on the breastplate of righteousness this morning is to say, listen, God, I am stepping in to who you are and through grace and through faith, through accepting you as my Savior, through the blood that was shed on Calvary, through that, I can, through faith, through faith, I can believe that I'm putting on the righteousness of God. Now, how many would have agreed this morning, and how many would probably admit that you have walked through your life through seasons for sometimes weeks and even months, but you've walked through your life without the righteousness of God protecting your heart? You see, the, the importance of the breastplate, the whole purpose of it, is to protect the vital organs. It's to protect your heart and your lungs. It's, it, it goes from your neck, the bottom of your neck, down here to your waist. It actually has loops. When he was describing this, it has loops that attaches to the belt of truth, which we don't have time to go into how righteousness and truth and integrity are all mixed in together and tied in together. But you understand how that all relates this morning. But it, it all ties in together, and that's what it's to protect from here to hear. Listen, you can handle getting hit in the arm and the leg and different, but if someone hits you in the heart, how many of you know that's a fatal blow? The breastplate of righteousness is there to protect the most important things in our life. We know this morning that physically our heart and our lungs are key to us living. If we take a fatal blow to our lungs and to our heart, that's 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 something that could take us out quickly. That's not a surface wound. That is something that has hit a vital organ. It's hit our heart. It's something that pumps everything and keeps our body going. And we know this morning that spiritually, if we don't put on the breastplate of righteousness, we're running the risk of getting wounded in the heart. Now, you're like me this morning. And when you look at the full armor of God, you're like me. There are certain parts of the armor that you like, and there are certain parts of the armor that you don't like. There are some days you don't mind putting on, you don't mind picking up your shield of faith. Woo, you're excited. You, you need faith. You don't mind picking up your shield. But you know, you're just not feeling like just really righteous. Uh, there's, some, there's some little things. There's a place you need to go to. There's a movie you want to watch. There, there's some friends you want to go hang out with. There's some things you're involved with at work. There's just some things that just really don't speak righteousness. And so you just don't want to put on the breastplate of righteousness today. You're just going to put on the helmet of salvation and you'll get your Bible. And, you know, I've got my Bible app and I, I've got that. I'll read my daily scripture. And, you know, there's certain parts. And if you admit it this morning, there's some of us, there's certain parts of the armor that we like. And there's some of the parts that we don't like. There's some of you this morning, there's some ladies in here, your shoes. You, you love shoes. You've got hundreds of pairs of shoes. And so you, you don't care about, you, you know, you're not so much with jeans and all. That, but you like shoes and you like you don't care I want another pair of shoes and so there are sometimes parts of the armor you just want to put you know you just want to prepare your feet and you want to have the right shoes on so you've got those on some people are hat people they just they've got hats I've got more hats than I'll ever wear but you just are certain parts of the armor that we want to put on but the purpose this morning is for the armor it's all tied in together and we read it in the first scripture we have to put on the full armor of God. Not just parts of it. Not just the pieces that we like. Not just what we think we're going to need. But we have to put on the full armor of God every single day. Every single day we're to put on the full armor of God because our battle, church, is not against one another. Our battle is not against our job and our workplace and all that stuff. The battle this morning is is a spiritual battle. And the enemy's doing everything that he can to take you out and to take me out, to take my family out, to take your family out. And it's important this morning that we put on not our righteousness. Scripture is very clear this morning in Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59, where am I at this morning? Somebody say, help him, Jesus. Verses 1 and 2. 
Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so they will not hear you. If you and I do not put on the righteousness of God, here's what happens. Have you ever been in a place where you felt like God didn't hear you? God didn't know where you were at? Or you felt like you were so far gone that God couldn't reach you? It's because our sins and our iniquity, everything we had, we had turned away from the righteousness of God. And it shows here, surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. It's not that he don't have the ability. But your iniquities, your sin has separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that you cannot hear him. If you and I are not careful, our sin and what we do will take us away from the righteousness of God. There's a story, and this is what got me a few weeks ago. There's a story in 1 Kings chapter 22 about King Ahab. The scripture says that King Ahab is one of the most wicked kings that we've ever had, that Israel ever had. He actually went to, to buy a vineyard from a man, and he got it so upset because the man wouldn't sell it to him. And so many of you will recognize King Ahab's wife as Jezebel. So Jezebel arranges for this man to sit across from two crooks at a, t- at a banquet, and they accuse him of defying God and different things. So they have the owner of this vineyard taken out and stoned and killed. And so he goes to Ahab, and she goes to her husband and said, Listen, he is dead now. Go and claim what is yours. Go claim his vineyard. Go claim his land. And the prophet Elijah, the word came to Elijah and said, He come to King Ahab and said, Listen, what you've done has caused God to curse you, and so you will surely die. And he prophesies that King Ahab will die and says, The very place where this man has died will be the very place that the dogs will lick your blood. And so we find here in verse 30, verses 29 and 30 in chapter 22, where King Ahab is going to battle. And he has King Jehoshaphat with him. And so he tells his friend, who's his his ally, this this king with him, they're fighting together. He tells him, listen, you go ahead and wear your king's robe. You go ahead and wear what what distinguishes you as this king. When they were going to battle, the kings would wear certain armor so everybody knew who the king was. He said, you go ahead and wear what you're supposed to, but I'm going to go into disguise. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot of people that you know. Any of y'all have some friends like that? Listen, you, you, do, you go ahead and do that. I'm going to disguise and I'm going to hide because there's been a decree on me. There's been a, it's been prophesied my life. I, I, I'm going to try to trick God. I'm going to try to disguise and fight this battle without God finding out. And so we find here, verse 29, So the king of Israel, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will enter the battle in disguise, but you wear your royal robe. So the king of Israel disguised himself and went into battle. Now the king of Aram had ordered his 32 chariot commanders, listen to this, do not fight with anyone small or great except the king of Israel. When the chariot commanders saw Jehoshaphat, they thought, surely this is the king of Israel. So they turned to attack him, but Jehoshaphat did what you and I would do when someone's coming to kill our friend and they think I'm that friend. Hey, listen, hang on. It's me. It's King Jehoshaphat. The guy you want is somewhere else. It's not me. He went to screaming, all right? How many would do that? No, no, you liars. I'm about to have an altar call for lying. So when they saw this, they turned to attack him. Jehoshaphat cried out. The chariot commander saw that it was not the king of Israel and they stopped pursuing him. Look at verse 34, and this is what we're going to close with this morning. But someone drew his bow at random. Everybody say random. You ever had somebody, a good friend, that they just have all these random thoughts in their head? You ever been around somebody like that? That you're talking to them and they're just like, you look at them like, what is it's so random? You, what, are you, what are you doing? It's, why are you even thinking about that? It's just, just crazy. My, my middle son's that way. He's just out of nowhere. You know, I wonder how they, wonder how they built that lot. And got it around, you know, just, just random thoughts. I'm like, what are you doing? This is so, stay on track. Stay on subject. Just like what I'm doing right now. Just random. Just all this stuff. <laughs> but scripture says someone, doesn't even mention this guy's name. Don't even, they don't even know who it is. 
Someone so insignificant, someone that's not even recorded in Scripture, someone drew his bow at random and hit the king of Israel between the sections of his armor. Not intentionally. Wasn't a a soldier that had spotted the king and could recognize him through his disguise and got set up and thought, all right, I see him. He's right there and calculated. No, 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 no. Just some certain man that was probably scared and probably couldn't even see what he was shooting at, just at random, took his bow and his arrow and slung it. The Scripture says that the king that was trying to hide, trying to disguise who he was, that was a man that had no integrity, that didn't have any kind of righteousness whatsoever. You see, the Scripture says that it struck him between his breastplate. It, it was, if you studied, it was between the sections of his armor. So, well, Pastor, I thought, well, if he had the breastplate on. No, no, no. He had the breastplate of his righteousness on. See, there's a difference when you have the breastplate of God's righteousness on and you have the breastplate of of your righteousness on. Scripture says that our righteousness is as filthy rags. Filthy rags. It's worth nothing. What you and I can do today and what you and I have achieved spiritually is not worth anything. And so many times we get up and we put on our righteousness of God. We put on our righteousness and how we think we're going to live and what we've accomplished. And you know what? God, I've got this figured out now. I've been in church long enough. I've done Bible study. I've learned Scripture. I've got, I know what I need. I know what I need to protect my heart. I know what I need to protect me. And sometimes we try to disguise it so that we can get around and we can still do what we want to do and no one and the enemy's not going to take us out and God will still, you know, we'll just want to get lost in the mix. But listen, We read it in in Isaiah 59 that when you and I, our iniquities and our sin will will cause God not to be able to reach us and not to be able to hear us. And so when we have our righteousness on, when we have put on our righteousness as a breastplate, or more importantly, when we've taken off the armor of God, doesn't mean a big thing is going to happen. Because some of us, we've got the big stuff covered this morning. We've got the big sins. We know, we know where to put. We know when that battle's coming. We know when to protect ourselves from that. We understand, okay, I'm going. Listen, I, for example, some of you guys, y'all work in oil field. Okay? Y'all work in oil field. Some of you a week on, week off, two weeks on, two. Some of you go a month and back a month. Some of you are every day. But you know that when you step back into that environment, on your drive, Brother Joe, on your drive back, you know in your mind what you know what you're preparing for. You know exactly what you're going into. You already know some of the attacks and some of the things that you're going to hear just naturally being in that environment. You know what protection already. Listen, I better be ready and I better be prepared for that. You know that. There are certain things in our life where we work in our family situations. We know automatically what what gear and what armor we need to put on. We prepare ourselves. But what happens when we're trying to just slip through and all of a sudden something random hits us? Because it's usually when we're not expecting it, it's usually out of nowhere and we don't even know where it came from. A few weeks ago, Kara and I were sitting down watching a football game, had the boys with us, watching TV, Watching a game, commercial come on, and just out of nowhere. Now listen, my boys, sometimes I still think of my boys as being four and five years old, and you know, they're just they're kind of oblivious to what's going on and don't understand, and you know, just not but but my boys are 10, 11 years old now. And there's a process that starts to take place when little boys start to become young men and they're in fourth and fifth and sixth grade and they're around other kids and they're around other things and they hear things and see things and they're communicating things. They're no longer five and six years old and just completely innocent to when they hear the word sex. That's right, I said sex in church. Listen, our families and our kids would be a lot better off if we talked about sex more in church. Oh, we can't, we can't say sex. 
Why not? The schools are talking about it. Everybody else is talking about it. Would you rather have your kids learn the godly way, the way God set up sex and relationship between a man and a woman, or do you want a sixth grader explaining it to them? That's exactly why you need to get your students into youth ministry. It's exactly why your kids need to be involved in church. Listen, you can get mad at this preacher. You don't ever have to come back again. I don't care. But it's the truth. Either you are going to explain it to them or somebody else will. We're sitting there watching a game in my own home, watching a football game with my kids, having just not a care in the world. And to be honest with you, I'd sit down and I'd take it off my armor. We all had. There's no battle to be fought. I'm in my own home. Why do I need to be alert? Why, why do I need to? Listen, we're, I'm at home with my wife and my kids. No, nobody's around. It's fine. Football game's on. Goes commercial. You guys watch TV. Don't pretend like you don't. You see these commercials and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it's just a girl being thrown on the bed. She's in her bra and panties. And they're laughing and giggling. And it's a commercial for some sitcom that's coming on. And it just... Just boom, and there it is. And I turn and I look, and there's my 9-year-old and my 11-year-old. It's the same way some of you guys looked at it when you saw it come on. And I'm sitting there, and listen, it was like something random hit me right in the heart. Wounded. And I just sat there, and I thought, what... What just happened here? What just took place? I'm watching a football game with my family. And out of nowhere, shoo, I don't even know what the I don't even know what the television show was. I don't even know what channel it was on. I don't even know what it, it doesn't matter. It was something so random out of nowhere. That quick. Not having my armor on and not having... So, Pastor, aren't you getting a little nitpicky? You better believe I am. You better believe I am. You see, you've got to watch out for the random things. Oh, preacher. Oh, really? Sit down with couples that that are struggling in their marriage and, and, and affairs has taken over and, and there's been adultery and different things. You know what it starts out with? It starts out with someone, just some random guy at work going, well, you sure do look cute today. Just the simple flirtation with the clerk at the gas station. Now all of a sudden, you'll drive clear across town to go fill up right there. Oh, y'all don't quit on me now. Listen, that's the truth. Don't look at me like I've lost my mind. Oh, it's the it's little comments on Facebook that you're searching through. Well, I think they meant that for me. I think it will. Little bitty things that you're not prepared for. It's the little looks at work. Someone rolls their eyes. They walk right past you. Because you haven't put on the full armor of God and prepared yourself mentally and physically knowing that we battle not against flesh and blood. Your battle is not with... Listen, it's not here. It's up here. And if you're not careful this morning, if I'm not careful this morning, if I relax and take off my armor and I'm not prepared... It's not just for me, it's for my family. Listen, I realize this morning my kids are not quite to the age where, where they can process all of this stuff. So it's my job to make sure that the armor is protecting my family. That the armor is around my kids and my family and my wife and what I say to my wife and the way I treat my wife. Listen, that's all part. i got to make sure that I have God's righteousness on. That what... I've prepared that I have put it on because the scripture says in Proverbs 4.23 above all else guard your heart above all else guard your heart because it's the wellspring of life it's the only way in scripture where it uses that phrase above all else 
So, Pastor, what are you telling me this morning? I'm telling you that every single day you better put on the full armor of God because you're in a battle whether you like it or not. It doesn't, you don't get to choose whether or not you're going to fight. The battle's coming to you. You're in the middle of it. You have accepted Christ. You're living your life, and it's coming to you and your family. And it's up to you, man, husband. Listen, it's your, it's up, it's your responsibility this morning as the man of the house every single day to get up and put on the full armor of God and make sure the full armor is on your wife, is on your kids, on your family, what you allow to come into your home, who you allow your kids to go home with. Listen, don't get your feelings hurt if my kids don't get to spend the night with everybody and everyone who asks because I'm very particular about who I let my kids go spend the night with. Why? Are you, because it just takes one time. takes one time. That, that's my responsibility. God entrusted me as the husband and the father of my three boys to put on the full armor of God. To cover them in the righteousness of God. Not in my righteousness. Which is why some of the things they don't get to do, some of the things they don't get to say, some of the things they don't get to watch, doesn't make any sense to them. Because Scripture is very clear. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. There are certain things. That's right, son. You won't be the cool kid this week. That's right. You're not going to get to watch that. You're not going to get to read that. You're not going to get to get involved in that conversation because that's not what we believe. Because that goes against God's Word. It goes against His commandments. Somebody say amen. It goes against the very nature of God. And because it goes against God, we will not be involved in it. Oh, you sound like an old holy preacher. and You better believe it. And if you're not speaking life and holiness in your kids and in your family, you better watch out because you will get taken out. And it may be at random or you may invite it in. You may know exactly what takes you out. Putting on the breastplate of righteousness. It's putting on what God wants and doing everything in your power this morning to turn from sin. If you got kids this morning, I don't care if they're six months old, 16, doesn't matter. As a parent, you better make sure you have your armor on. Tell you what it convicted me. I realized just that quick, with me sitting next to my kids, how a random dart of lust, random dart of pornography, random dart of sin could hit my child. You go back and you research serial killers and mass murderers and rapists and all this stuff, and you know what? You interview them and they'll take you back to a time and they'll say, it all started when I looked at a Playboy magazine when I was 12. My uncle left this out. It all comes back to something so simple, something so random. It's not the big thing. It's just some random act, some random commercial, some random video, some random things. Okay, I'm going to get off the kids for a second. You know, it's just the random things that we read. We've got people in our churches today, they can't remember the last time they read the Word of God, but they've read all the Twilight series, and they can quote Fifty Shades of Grey like, they, like it's Scripture. That's not putting on the righteousness of God. And you think it is? Bring it down here and let's put it on the screen and let's just see how it matches up. It don't add up. It's not righteousness. And if you can read and watch all of that, and, it, and I don't have time to go, if you can read and watch all that stuff, you're not putting on the righteousness of God. And if you are not careful, you will be taken out. A lot of people are uncomfortable right now. You can get mad at me all you want. This is what God has laid on my heart. You're sitting in church this morning. You're sitting in church this morning because you have a desire to have a relationship with God. And because you want God to be in control of your life, your marriage, and your family. Scripture instructs us above all else, guard our heart. 
The enemy can take your heart out. Your life is destroyed. I'm not up here to point fingers this morning. I've got mistakes and I watch and I've listened to things that I don't need to listen to. And things that I've cut out of my life and things that shows that we've cut out watching. That I'm ashamed that I've sat down and taken my armor off. And allowed that trash to come into my house. I'm not pointing fingers at you this morning. But I hope this morning that you realize I'm trying to encourage you something. We've got to put on the full armor of God. You may think you have everything covered, but some random error will find its place. Because when you allow sin and you allow things into your life, God turns His head and God allows that to happen to you. Some of us get mad at God. God, why didn't you protect me? Listen, don't you blame God. Don't you blatantly get involved in sin and turn your face. Don't you turn away from God and expect Him to come protect you. His promises only come true and His promises are only relevant and can become fruitful in our life through our obedience. When you and I are obedient, that's open, that opens up the promises of God. Not when you and I just know about the promise. Know that God can protect us. Listen, my kids know all the rules of the house and so do your kids. But it's only when they start to obey those rules that they get any benefit from me. <laughs> they can say they know it all. I mean, they can, they can write it down, they can quote it, and they can tell their friends about it. But until they actually do it, there'll be no benefits from mom and dad. You ever notice how nice your kids get when they want something? You walk in, they're cleaning their room. You're like, okay, this is a trap. I know what, I know what this is. All right, what do you want? Where do you want to go? Oh, no. Blah, blah, oh, what, blah. Just go to stutter. It's only when you and I begin to obey God. Listen, my heart this morning is this. we got to put on the full armor of God. First of all, the belt of truth, integrity. It starts with you being honest with where you're at in your relationship with God. Number two, the breastplate of righteousness. The things of God. His righteousness. Because if we're not careful, we'll be taken out by something random. Something we're not even... A little comment at work. Something we hear on the radio. A movie that we watch. Get us thinking about what it had been like if I'd have dated somebody else. Or if I'd have done this and do that. And it starts that whole process in our mind. Because we left ourselves un unprotected. We're walking around in our own Righteousness. Instead of putting on the righteousness of God that can protect us from that. There's a lot of us in here, we've been, we've been wounded in our heart. You know what it's like to be broken, be destroyed, be lost and confused and need, need a Savior. And you know what it's like for God to redeem you. There's a lot of you in here this morning, you're raising your family, you're doing everything you can to protect them. We shared Wednesday night Like me, most of us in here this morning, we can look back to a time in America, time in our life where certain sins were not tolerated in our life. Some of us can look back to a time where homosexuality was a dirty word. It was something to be ashamed of. It was something that wasn't tolerated. It wasn't, it wasn't in music. It wasn't on TV. It wasn't, it wasn't presented as something normal. I mean, I mean, you could think back to a time like that. There's several things, television today, the things we see and the things, some of you could look back in television how, how innocent it was and how careful they were not to even show, you know, a man and woman in bed. Now TV's gotten to where it's just, it, just the commercials are just awful. There's a generation coming up now, that's why I had Josh show that video this morning. There's a generation being raised today, my kids, they won't ever have a time like that in their life. They'll never be able to look back and say, yeah, I remember when homosexuality wasn't the norm. No, no, it's always, it's accepted now. They don't have that reference point to where before abortion was legal and all. I mean, 
Some of the things that we have, you've seen it progress. We've got a generation coming up today. They're not going to know any different. And that's why it's so important that you get your kids and you insulate them with the Word of God. You can't protect them from everything. I'm not telling you to homeschool your kids and limit all that stuff. If you want to do that, that's fine. But you're not going to protect them from everything. The only way you're going to get to, you insulate them with the Word of God in this world. And they know and they find their strength and they find their peace and they find their love and they see mom and dad love God with all their heart and they see mom and dad love them with all their heart and they see the love of God through you. And you insulate them with the Word of God so they can go into this world. So they can go into this world and they know they're protected because you've put on the armor. You're protecting them with God's righteousness, saturating them every single day in prayer. Asking God to protect them and to guide them and to protect their ears and their eyes and and shield them from all. There's nothing wrong with that. That's why it's so important to this generation today that we have a student pastor. He and his wife that stay up late and they cry and they're they're frustrated because they want more kids and they're what can we do more to reach kids? What can we do? You better believe it will give ten thousand dollars. So it seems like we're buying them. Well, you know what? We pay thousands of dollars to have good music, to have lighting, to have all this other stuff, so you will come. I turn the air conditioners off and no music and all that stuff, and we just get up here and do it a cappella and ah, yeah, sing and listen to everybody. You won't come back. You won't. So don't sit there and be like, well, I can't believe they get away. You better believe it. If I could qualify, I'd enter to win the ten thousand dollars. So I'm saying, Pastor, when you do that here on Sunday morning? They do No, they don't. Sixty-eight was the cutoff. <laughs> Listen, it, it, it's so important. It's so important that you get your kids here. That God's righteousness. Listen, I grew up in a godly home, and there's a lot of things that my parents didn't allow me to do. I didn't understand when I was 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, but I understand it now, and I get it. I understand why my mom was so firm and my dad was so firm and said, you are not going. You're not going. You're not going to the school dance. You're not going to the movies. I know some of you are going, what? What's wrong with the school dance? Well, y- y'all better stop talking right there because I could probably point to what happened while you school dance. It's not the dancing, it's what it leads to. Get a little bump and grind going on, things start changing. Get a little freak train. How I many you know what I'm talking about? Don't make me call you out. You know exactly what happens at a dance. It hasn't changed. It's what it leads to. Didn't understand it when I was 14, 15, 16. I get it now. I totally understand it. I thought people are going to think I'm weird. They did think I was weird. You haven't been to the movies? You've never been to the movies? Dad, you're making me... What are you, we're, we're like freaks. I mean, what are you doing? They think we're crazy. I get it now. What was my parents doing? He was protecting me. My parents put on the full armor. They didn't choose to leave a part of it out so that my, their kids could be accepted. So the kids could be, feel good about themselves or because they could just kind of fit in and no one would think something's crazy about you. Listen, if you're going to serve God, they're going to think you're crazy. They're going to have to know there's something different about you. I'm not talking about being crazy and walking around with your head in the clouds and you're so heavenly minded you're no earthly good. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about separating yourself from sin and worldliness and the things of this world. And drawing a line in the sand and saying, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You do what you need to do, but my word and God's word says this is sin and this is against His word. And so me and my family will not be partaking in that. I will not allow that into my house, into my marriage, into my kid's life. I choose to put on His righteousness. Not what you think is righteous. Not what the world thinks is righteous, but I'll put on the righteousness of God. And it will look different from the righteousness of this world. It will not make sense. Scripture is very clear. We are aliens in this world. We're a foreigner. 
I'm just passing through. This is not my home. This is not my home. It's our job to live with righteousness. Put it on. Because if you don't, something random will take you out. You'll be sitting there and you'll wonder why your kid is in jail. Why he's lost on drugs. Why he can't hold down a relationship. Why he can't. You'll wonder why your marriage is struggling. How did it happen? I can't believe something so small. This doesn't even make sense. You didn't put on the full armor. Because of that, something random took you out. My heart this morning is put, a, put on the full armor of God. Put on the breastplate of righteousness, God's righteousness. And be determined in your heart today. I'm not going to let something random take out my kids, take out my marriage, take out my relationship with God. I want to make sure that I've put on the righteousness of God. And above all else, I want to guard my heart. Because it's from there everything comes. Everything I speak, everything I do, I want it to be of God. Stand with me this morning. I want to ask you just to bow your heads with me real quickly this morning.